Well, let's get into the Word of God today. Man, don't the kids do good? Man, every year that we do a program like this, I have to follow them, and it's always so hard because they're so cute. Turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 24, verse number 1. And as you're turning there, I want you to look to your neighbor at the same time and say, Jesus changed everything. Find somebody else around you and say, Jesus changed everything. In Luke chapter 24, verse number 1, I'm going to read from the Passion's Translation today. The Bible says this very early that Sunday morning, the women made their way to the tomb, carrying the spices that they had prepared. Among them was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, Jesus' mother. Arriving at the tomb, they discovered the huge stone covering the entrance had been rolled away. So they went in to look, but the tomb was empty. The body of Jesus was gone. They stood there stunned and perplexed. Suddenly, two men with dazzling white robes, shining like lightning, appeared above them. Terrified, the women fell to the ground on their faces. The men in white said to them, Why do you look for the living in a tomb? He is not here, for he has risen. Have you forgotten what he said to you while he was still in Galilee? The Son of Man is destined to be handed over to sinful men to be nailed to a cross, and on the third day he will rise again. Hallelujah. All at once they remembered his words. Leaving the tomb, they went to break the news to the eleven and to all of the others of what they had seen and heard. I want to declare to you today that Jesus did not stay in the tomb. I want to declare to you today, Jesus is alive. And Jesus changed everything. There's actually documented eyewitness accounts that Jesus is truly alive. These eyewitnesses accounts are actually recorded in the New Testament. The very first one is the testimony of Dr. Luke, the writer of the book of Acts and the gospel of Luke. He said this in Luke chapter, or excuse me, in Acts chapter 1, verse number 1. He said this. He said, the former account I made, O Theophilus, all that Jesus began to both do and teach until in that which until that day in which he was taken up after he through the holy spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen look at verse 3 to whom he also presented himself alive he presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen notice this being seen by them during 40 days In speaking of the things pertaining pertaining to the kingdom of God. So we find Dr. Luke saying that he showed himself alive to many people, not just for a couple days, but for 40 days he showed himself alive. In 2 Peter chapter 14, verse 15, Peter speaks to a loud crowd after the Holy Spirit had fallen in the upper room. He said this in verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is of the third hour. And jump down to verse 32. He goes on and says in this message, he goes, This Jesus God has raised us, of which we are all witnesses. So we find Peter standing up in front of a large crowd from all over the place. He's basically declaring to them that Jesus is alive. He was raised up, and he basically was telling them, you saw it too. You were witnesses that Jesus is truly alive. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 through 8, Paul gives a list of people to whom the risen Jesus appeared. These witnesses to the resurrected Jesus include the Apostle Peter, James, the brother of Jesus, and a group of more than 500 people at the same time. Jesus is truly alive. Eyewitnesses' account prove that Jesus is alive. In fact, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, was the first to see Jesus alive in Mark chapter number 16. Now, all of these accounts that I just told you of, have withstood the test of time, in fact, over 2,000 years. Many of them were even put to death since they could not renounce their testimonies about his resurrection, about him being alive. They were willing to die for their testimony that they saw Jesus alive. So again, I declare to you today, Jesus is 
alive. And Jesus changed everything. In Luke chapter 24, verse 44, the Bible goes on and says this. Then Jesus said, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Jesus not only is alive, but he fulfilled prophecy. In fact, thousands of years before Jesus' birth, prophets proclaimed the coming of the Messiah, that he would save his people from the evils of this world. In fact, nearly 750 years before Christ's birth, the Old Testament prophet Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. That prophecy was fulfilled. In fact, Jesus Christ fulfilled over 300 prophecies. Let me give you kind of an illustration of this today. To point this out, any man just fulfilling eight of these prophecies, the probability of this would be one in 100 trillion. Just eight prophecies fulfilled. One in 100 trillion. How many know that's a lot of trillions? Now, now check this out. To illustrate this point, to make this a little bit more real to us, if we were to take $100 trillion coins and lay them on the face of the state of Texas, how many love your state here? The state of Texas, they would probably be, now I'm, dollar coins, $100 trillion coins, lay them face to face across the state of Texas, it would be approximately four feet deep. That's $100 trillion. Now, check this out. Now, if we were to walk, mark one of those dollar coins and thoroughly stow up the whole mass all over the state of Texas and then blindfold somebody, a man, a woman, whoever, and blindfold them and let them travel as far as they want to, they must now pick out that one dollar coin out of 100 trillion. That is a chance of one in 100 trillion of him finding that coin. It has been proven and documented that Jesus not only fulfilled eight prophecies, but 300 prophecies. It's undeniable that Jesus is the Messiah, the King. He has proven himself time and time again. He is alive. He is alive. And Jesus has changed everything. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus has changed everything. Historians have stated that there is more proof of Jesus of Nazareth's existence than any or most other historical figures of the first century. In fact, there is more evidence that Jesus existed than Julius Caesar. And no one's ever even doubted Caesar's existence. Biblical history states that Jesus was born of a virgin. He was one and only person that has ever been born of a virgin. Jesus Christ, we know, he lived for 33 years on this planet. Three of those 33 years, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. In those three years, Jesus Christ performed over 35 miracles He calmed the stormy seas. He defied the laws of nature by walking on water. He raised people from the dead. He fed 5,000 men and their families with five loaves and two fish. To prove that he could do the same miracle again, he fed 4,000 men and their families with seven loaves and some fish. He changed water to wine. He told a man to catch a fish and he would find a a coin inside of that fish's mouth. I like that one best of all. A restored, he restored an ear that was cut off. He casted out demons. He healed blind eyes, withered hands, fever, deaf ears, the lame, internal bleeding, the paralyzed leprosy. Jesus is alive and he changed everything. Those of us who are Christians call Jesus these names. He is the Almighty One, the one who is and who is to come. He is the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. He's our advocate, the one who pleads our case before God. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is the one with all authority and power. Jesus is the bread of life, and those who come to him will never hunger. 
He is the beloved son of God. He is a heavenly bridegroom. He is a chief cornerstone upon which our lives are built on. Jesus is the deliverer who frees all of us who have been bound. Jesus is the faithful and true. He can never fail us. He is the good shepherd that has laid down his life for us. He is the great high priest. He's the head of the church. He is a holy servant that heals and signs and wonders take place. Jesus said, he said this, he said, I am. So we know that Jesus is the great I am. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. He is the indescribable gift. He is the judge of the living and the dead. Jesus is the king of all kings. Hallelujah. Jesus changed everything. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the light of the world. He's the line of the tribe of Judah. He is Lord of all. He's a mediator between God and man. Jesus is the Messiah. He's the mighty one. He's the one who sets people free. Jesus is our hope. He is our peace. He changed everything. He's the greatest prophet of all time. He's our redeemer. He's our risen Lord. He's our rock. He's a sacrifice for our sins. He's the savior of the world. He's the son of man. He's the son of the most high. He's the supreme creator over all. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the door to eternity. He is the way to heaven. He is the word made flesh. He is the true vine. He is the truth. He is the victorious one. He is wonderful. Count Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus changed everything. Jesus also conquered death. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, he said, I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Somebody say amen. He goes on and says, and I have the keys of Hades and death. Jesus was an innocent man that died on the cross, guilty of crimes he did not commit. The religious people of his time convinced the Roman government to convict Jesus Christ of blasphemy based on false testimonies. Because he was convicted of blasphemy, he was sentenced to death. The Roman soldiers whipped Jesus almost to the point of death. They made him carry a wooden cross through the streets to a mountainside called Golgotha, which is, means the skull. He got to that place. The Roman soldiers nailed our Savior, Jesus Christ, to a wooden cross. And Jesus, his last words were, it is finished. At that moment, the earth quaked. The veil in the temple was torn. torn. The graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints were raised. The Roman soldiers that were guarding Jesus saw and felt the earthquake and the things that had just happened, and they said in great fear, truly, this was the Son of God. Jesus changed everything. Look at your neighbor again and say, Jesus changed everything. While Jesus was alive, he told his followers in John chapter 14, verse number 2 and 3. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Jesus goes on and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus knew that he was going to be crucified, but he also knew that he would come again. <laughs> Woo! He even stated, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then he asked this question, do you believe this? After three days of being in the grave, Jesus was resurrected to life. And again, I declare to you, Jesus is alive. Jesus gives every human, be every human being the ability to live forever. The greatest news that anyone could ever hear is the news that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead just as he's promised. 
The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation for our Christian faith. In fact, it is the gospel. What about this belief about the gospel of Jesus, this resurrection? Without a belief in the resurrection, there can be no personal salvation. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says, If we confess our, uh, confess our sins with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that Jesus raised Him from the dead, we will be saved. The Bible teaches that because Christ lived, we shall live also. The greatest truth that could ever be heard is that Jesus died and, and rose again. And that you and I too will eventually one day die unless the trumpet blows, but can raise again to newness of life. In Romans chapter 6, verse number 4, the Bible says, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Perhaps today you do not know the power of the resurrected Christ. Have you ever knelt down at the foot of the cross and had Jesus forgive you of your sins? On that first Good Friday, Jesus died on the cross in your place. Jesus died on the cross in my place. He took our judgment. He took our sin. He took our death. The scripture says in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. The Bible goes, and goes on and says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. On the third day, Jesus was raised from the dead. That fact is a guarantee that everything Christ did on the cross was acceptable to God in our place. Now we need to receive Him and believe on Him. God says that he will clothe us in his righteousness. Everyone can know the power of the resurrection and the power of the resurrected Christ. Through disappointments in life and through all the trials and all the things that we face, all the circumstances, the resurrected Jesus, the resurrected Christ will go with us and be beside us if you put your trust in him by faith. At this glorious Easter time, what better time to give our life to Christ, to turn your will to His, to let the resurrection Christ come and dwell in our hearts and give us supernatural power to meet the problems in your life. We thank you, Father, right now with everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed. We humble ourselves before you today and we thank you for the word that promises that Jesus, you are alive. Today we, celebrate, uh, today we celebrate all that you've done for us. Today we thank you that you are alive and that you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. We thank you, God, that you are moving in our midst right now even. With every head bowed and eyes closed, maybe there's some people here today that's never accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Maybe they've never said a simple prayer, Jesus, come take away that pain, take away that sin. I want the assurance that I'm going to heaven and not hell. If that's you today, maybe you're also somebody that's fallen away from God and you've, you've left the church, you left Christianity, you, you know, you, you were saved at one time, but you, man, you don't know if you're going to heaven or hell anymore and you want to make it right today. I want to give you that opportunity today to make things right. Again, with head, everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed. If that's you today and you want prayer, you want, you want to know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus has saved you and that you're going to heaven and not hell. I want to pray for you today. So if that's you, if you would, please just raise your hand real high. We want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Keep your hands held real high if that's you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? If that's you, I want you to do something. You raise your hand. I want you to stand to your feet. The Bible says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. If that's you, if you raised your hands, just go ahead and stand to your feet. We have some people that's going to come and pray with you right now. If you raise your hand, just go ahead and stand to your feet. 
Just be bold and step out there and just raise. Thank you, sir. Who else? Just stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Church, let's begin to pray. Father, we thank you so much for your presence. We thank you that you're here with us. Lord, we believe that you're ministering to the hearts of your people today. So we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody, just go ahead and put your hand over your heart. Let's pray this simple prayer today together. Just repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you today. I've made a lot of mistakes. And I need a Savior to take away all my sin. Today I confess you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Come and take away all my sin. Take away all that hurts and pain. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I commit to follow you all the days of my life. Holy Spirit, I ask that you help me as I go along this journey as a Christian. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Those of you that are watching online that may pray that prayer, if you would, please just give us some of your information there on our website. We'll send some things to you. Um, and, man, it's a glorious day when people get saved.